Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I will focus on statistics. Okay, statistic is very very important to everyone. So, uh, this video teaching is meant for Form Four KSSM Mathematics and also Form Five KBSM Additional Max. As I mentioned earlier, the Form 5 Additional Max Statistics Syllabus now is under KSSM Mathematics. So, um, this video is suitable for Form 4 KSSM students and also Form 5 Additional Max students. So, I would like to take this opportunity to reteach the statistics especially for form 5 additional max students because this topic i guess uh, many of you you forgotten the formula and also you have uh, forgot the skills of the solving problem involving statistics so i really hope that you stay focused to my video teaching to learn how to solve statistics this is because statistics is very important not only for your SPM exam but for your future career that statistic is really really important and you must master the important basic from now on all right let's have a look of the uh, important skills important formula of the statistics right now so uh, because uh, this topic consists of many formula and many students don't like it because of that so i wish you will fall in love with statistics and you will love this topic after I teach you. I'm sure if you love the topics, you can do well in your exam. Believe me. Okay, so now let's uh, start the lesson. Alright, okay, we are going to start soon. Uh, let's uh, rest for a while and enjoy the presentation of the fall in love with statistics and statistics is fun okay statistics is one of the most important topic in form 4 kssm and also form 5 kbsm all right for form 4 it will be in max and form 5 it will be in additional max so let's get start with the class so this is actually uh, the additional max uh, module which is uh, very useful for uh, those students to revise your statistics knowledge all right so today i will focus on paper one for additional max and maybe form KSSM mathematics. So let's uh, go through about 10 questions for statistics. All right, so the key to success is actually in your hand. The key to success is in your hand and not in other people's hand inclusive of teacher's hand and your parents hand so it's you yourself that will bring success to you okay so let's get start with the class right now so i hope you aware that you are very important to bring success to yourself all right let's get start with the statistic now okay guys let's see question number one a set of eight 
numbers has a mean of 11 find summation of the x okay so for paper one question uh, you will see short question like this okay summation of the x means that the total so for statistic we always use a symbol okay the summation symbol is looks like m but it's a standing m we call it standing m okay so the formula for mean okay is summation of the data over n so the n is number of data you have eight numbers and the mean you have given 11 so the moment you see statistic all right so you have to write down the formula for statistic mean is equivalent to summation of the data over n still remember okay so when you do statistic you always label when you see mean you write down the mean symbol you still remember how to write the mean okay so let's uh, get start to, uh, with the labeling of the symbol whenever you do statistic always highlight the keywords after highlight then you label the symbol for the statistics all right so we have mean which is 11 now i'm going to label the mean and i'm going to label the n and i'm going to write the formula for mean which is equivalent to uh, that is how you write mean this is the total of the data summation of data over n that's how you read summation of the data it means that when you read the question your label n is 8 and then mean is 11 okay you write the formula and then you label information given by the question and then for you if you are given mean and number of data that means you can find the total the total is just take the mean times the number of data right that is how you apply the formula so uh, n times the mean so you have 8 times 11 or 11 times 8 the same okay so um, many of you forgotten the statistics okay especially uh, important formula so i have to reteach so that you recall the formula okay so you have to keep on practice so that you can memorize now when a number k is added to this set this set still apply to the summation of the 88 the new mean is 10 find the value of the k so okay now you must understand originally you have 88 your the sum of data now you're going to add one number which is k this number k is unknown so that means if you add 10 you become total becomes 88 plus 10 right so if you add k the total now is 88 plus k right understand so before you add and after you add you must have a clearer picture so now you have to find the new mean after you add the k so before that your sum is 88 right now after you add the k the sum will become 88 plus k and the total number of data will increase by one because there is a number k a number k so n become 9 so then the new mean is a new total over new number of the data right and the new mean was given so you just uh, substitute 10 okay 10 is a new mean equal to new total 88 plus k over 9 and then you cross multiply your k is 2 clear so you have to know how to apply okay this is actually uh, part of the hot you must know what is going on and how to solve the question all right so we have solved the k equivalent to 2 so now i'm going to go through uh, about 10 questions so that you are aware that statistics 
need more practice so that you can recall all the important formula like mean formula you must recall you must memorize okay you have to memorize and you can use it okay uh, if you practice a lot you don't have to refer to the formula list you can just write down like this okay mean is total over number of data all right okay so when you add the new data the total also will change the number of data also change of course the mean will change okay now we we'll proceed to the next question is about the table one shows the distribution of the length of 30 fish caught by uh, anin in a day so okay so now we have the length okay of 30 fish they already inform you total is 30 right so that means a total frequency frequency means total number of the fish okay so now you want to find the mean this is a, a group data why we call it a group data because there is a class interval and the data are actually classified into certain class interval so it's a group data so in order to find the mean you have to start with the midpoint okay let's find the midpoint for every class interval so you have the 20 24 that's the lower limit plus our upper limit divided by 2 remember in order to find the midpoint so we will find the midpoint first for the first class interval 20 plus 24 divided by 2 normally midpoint will use a symbol x okay so you see the formula will have uh, mean equal to summation of the frequency times the x over summation of the frequency okay now we need to find the midpoint 20 plus 24 divided by 2 22 all right you just find the first one will do the first midpoint all right so after you find the first midpoint you can actually plus the size of the class the 20 to 24 is actually the size is 5 not 4 5 so you plus 5 so very fast you find the first one you plus 5 for the subsequent one the next one so 22 plus 5 you get 27 27 you plus 5 you got 32 right so it's very easy rather than you take 30 plus 34 you by 2 you just add 5 okay 32 plus 5 37 and 37 plus 5 you will get 42 right so now you need to take the uh, midpoint times the frequency over the total frequency right remember okay now i just revise you the midpoint is lower limit plus upper limit divided by 2 remember this is very important especially for form 5 mathematics right they will for sure ask you to find the mean for the group data right okay now i'm going to show you how to find the mean i'm sure many of you got no problem you just find the midpoint and you will take the midpoint times with the frequency one by one and you plus so the formula is summation that means you have to plus frequency times a midpoint okay midpoint is uh, x all right frequency is f so now i'm going to show you how i multiply one by one so do it carefully if possible you press your calculator twice so that you will tally the answer all right okay all right so now we have multiply 22 you times the frequency 5 plus 27 times with the frequency 3 plus 32 times with the frequency uh, okay 9 plus 37 multiply by 7 plus 42 multiply by 6 over total frequency 
But just now you read the question already, right? This, or you can plus you five plus three plus nine plus seven plus six. But if the question gave you the total number, so you don't have to plus. You can use it as the total. All right. So now you can just press your calculator. Okay, the top one we call as summation of frequency times a midpoint, and the down one is summation of the frequency. Make sure you understand the symbol. Okay, so many students are very weak in writing the symbol. So summation, make sure you write properly. Okay, F is the frequency, and the X is the midpoint. All right. Make sure you understand x is the midpoint. It's not the x that you learn in algebra. For statistic, x here is the midpoint, and frequency is f. And then the summation symbol you must know. Now, if you press a calculator, you get a total, which is so. Okay, try to press a calculator and write the total right, which is nine nine zero. All right, over the total frequency, which is uh, given thirty, right? So now you just divide, and you will get the answer, which is equivalent to thirty-three. That is the answer for the mean. Now let's do another question. Table two shows the distribution of marks. Obtained by fifty-six students in a test. So the marks is given in class interval twenty to twenty-nine for student, thirty to thirty-nine you have twenty student. Altogether you got fifty-six student, and then forty to forty-nine sixteen student, and fifty to fifty-nine you have ten student, and finally sixty to sixty-nine six student. And then you're asking to find the midpoint of the model class. Okay, model class. What it means by model class? Model class is the class interval with the highest frequency. Okay, so you study the frequency. Which one is the highest? And then you identify that class. It seems like. That one I highlighted in red color is having the highest number of student. Number of student we call as frequency. Okay, frequency means repetition. Highest frequency. That means you will have ah twenty student repeat the marks between thirty to thirty nine. All right. So thirty to thirty nine is called as model class. Okay. So we have to find the midpoint. So remember, just now I say midpoint is take the lower limit plus the upper limit divided by two, right? So that is so called midpoint. Okay, so I highlighted in yellow color for the model class, and then I will take the average of the thirty plus thirty nine divided by two. So model class is. Thirty plus thirty-nine divided by two, and the answer is thirty-four point five. Right? Okay. Let's work out the answer for the model class. So, a uh, model class we write down first is thirty to thirty-nine, and then the midpoint is thirty plus thirty-nine divided by two. So the answer that you got is thirty-four point five. Please show your working clearly like this. Okay, now we will proceed to the next one, which is the mean. Okay, again the same thing like just now. So you should know how to do right. So you find the midpoint. Okay. So the first one is twenty four point five. Okay, a midpoint we use x. Okay, not x bar. Thirty four point five, forty four point five, and fifty four point five, and finally is 
64.5 so there is a difference of the 10 right each one plus 10 now we're going to find the mean so how to find the mean you take the uh, frequency times the midpoint one by one and you plus right okay one by one midpoint times the frequency over total frequency so please do it carefully okay so that you won't have careless mistake so until the last one is okay 64.5 times with the six okay so you have all the midpoint times the frequency okay you plus so that's called summation of the frequency times the midpoint and you have to divide by summation of the frequency so again i show you you take four times 24.5 plus 10 20 times 34.5 plus 16 times 44.5 plus 10 times 54.5 plus 6 times 64.5 and then you just underline okay using a long line all right so this step is a must to show because this is a working step all right then you over the total frequency all right but the question say 56 students so uh, i guess we don't have to go and plus one by one which is very time consuming now just just key in into your calculator and give me the answer okay so i'm waiting for your answer before i show to you my answer okay let's get start with the calculator and then calculate the mean or we call as the average of the distribution distribution means is a set of the data with the class interval and the midpoint okay so finally what is your answer okay the top one we call as summation of frequency times the data okay frequency times data is sum of the fx please change please add the f is 2432 over summation of the frequency which is 56 so your answer is 304 over 7 or you can give the answer in for significant figure 43.43 right this is the final answer for the mean okay so now we will continue with the next question but uh, before that i just want to highlight to you your answer from calculator is 43.4285 so seeing the 8 is more than 5 we have to plus 1 to the 2 so it will be 43.43 make sure you round off accurately into four significant figures next we will proceed to the next question a set of data consists of six number the sum of the number is 72 and the sum of the uh, data squares okay or the square of data is 960 find for the six numbers the mean and the standard deviation okay this is a very common question in exam so basically when you read the question you label you convert into statistical symbol so we have six numbers so we will write n equal to six right and then you will write sum of the number how you write remember please use the symbol sum of the number is x equal to 72 
and then some okay some of the square of the number so you will write the symbol summation of the x square equal to 960 right that is how you write then you will write summation symbol as this okay please follow then you're asking to find the mean so remember mean is equal to summation of the x divided by n so the summation of the x is 72 all right and then number of data is how many six right so the mean is 12 all right 72 divided by 6 is 12 now we want to solve the standard deviation so the formula for standard deviation is square root sum of the data square over n minus mean square remember there is a square for the mean and we just plug in everything summation of the data square is give, uh, given by the equation right is 960 remember that so we will substitute everything into the standard deviation formula make sure you have the square root summation of the data square is 960 divided by how many data six data right okay and then you minus out the mean what is the mean 12 right we just calculated the mean and don't forget for standard deviation you have to square root all right make sure you square root the answer for the standard deviation so if you press your calculator okay uh, you will get a square root of okay let's try press your calculator you get square root 16 right which is 4 so the standard deviation is 4 okay so this is the answer for the standard deviation so for form 4 and form 5 students you must always practice so that you can memorize the formula easily all right so next we will discuss another question now let, let's go through the question you have a set of positive integers consists of 2 5 and q and the variance for the set of data is 1 4 find the value of q okay this is a bit challenging so first of all we are given variance and you are given the positive integers all these are important keywords so let me write down the variance formula for you sum of data square over n minus mean square and the standard deviation is just one square step you just square root the variance for the standard deviation so variance is given by sigma square and standard deviation is without square right so it's just one more step you just square root the variance to get the standard deviation so we are not going to use standard deviation we we'll use variance all right sum of the data square uh, we will take the data we square one by one five square plus q square over three we have three data and then we have to find the mean we have the plus the three data 2 plus y plus q over 3 and square all right and the variance was given in the question which is 1 4 right so the variance is 14 so remember when you want to find the mean you always have to total up you take the 2 plus y plus q over the number of data which is 3 right okay be careful there is a square for the mean okay so now we need to simplify carefully b 
before that we substitute the 14 which is a variance so please do not square again because it is given as variance unless it's given a standard deviation you have to square the 14 but here you're not supposed to square the 14 because variance is 14 so 14 is uh, 4 plus 25 plus q over 3 minus uh, 2 plus 5 is 7 plus q over 3 square so now we are going to simplify before we simplify we simplify 4 plus 25 is 29 plus q square over 3 minus 7 plus q over 3 we have to square separately the numerator square and then the denominator have to square all right okay so that is how you solve the uh, square when you have a over b square it means that a square over b square all right now i'm going to show you how i simplify okay so before that you must know that uh, 7 plus q over 3 square is actually 7 plus q square over 3 square the, right this is a very basic that you must know so later you will have to do separately the numerator and denominator so it seems like the denominator is getting 9 so in this case i will prefer you to multiply by 9 for every term instead of you make the denominator the same you multiply by 9 multiply by biggest denominator so i will multiply by 9 for every term okay so then i will solve it let's see how i solve now uh, we have to times the 14 with 9 we get 1 2 6 and then be careful with the 9 times the 3 for the 29 plus q square so it's actually you simplify like this so it will be 3 times 29 plus q square and the 9 and 9 can be cancelled out easily and left minus 7 plus q to the power of 2 now it seems like quite simple let's expand uh, carefully all right so 1 2 6 is 3 times uh, 29 you will get uh, 87 plus 3 q square minus be careful you have to expand 7 plus q times 7 plus q because it's square so 7 7 multiplied is 49 7 q plus another 7 q so you get 14 q later plus the q square right now uh, we will proceed by simplify right as 49 plus 14 q plus q square okay now we are going to rearrange until general form okay we will rearrange until general form for all the quadratic equation whenever you simplify you must make sure it is general form now we will expand 87 plus 3q square minus 49 minus 14q minus q square right and then we'll focus the light term 3q square minus q square so we'll get left 2q square right and then minus 14q and the number 87 minus 49 and then you have to minus 1 2 6 so the uh, balance of the number that you got is you can use a calculator is minus 88 equal to 0 and then you have to divide by 2 for every term before you factorize bear in mind that you cannot press your calculator without simplify for the general form okay so you will get into trouble all right if you never simplify so if you simplify you'll get q square minus 7 q minus 44 equal to 0 and then i'm sure you got no problem in factorize the quadratic 
equation so you will get q minus 11 q plus 4 equal to 0 you can use your calculator to find the roots of the quadratic equation so q is 11 and the other q is negative 4 we have to reject the answer because uh, the question did mention that okay the number are positive right so please follow the instruction of the question so we need to answer according to the instruction of the question right so there you see positive integers that means the two is positive the five is positive and the q you must choose the 11 just now all right if the question mentioned positive integer so you have to give the answer which is positive integer okay so that is how you solve for statistics it can be a bit complicated like this if your basic of the statistics knowledge is good you will be able to solve it confidently right okay we will proceed to the next question right now before we proceed to the next question just bear in mind that for a solving problem involving quadratic equation step one is you must make sure you have general form then after that you factorize and then you will let the factor equal to zero before you can find the factor equal to zero before you can find the unknown all right okay so there are steps you need to follow in order to solve the quadratic equation next we will discuss another one the mean of eight numbers is p okay we highlight the keywords and the sum of the squares of the number is 200 and the standard deviation is 4m okay sum of square is 200 standard deviation is 4m so let's write down the formula for standard deviation before we express p in terms of m so let's have a look of the uh, question and we will convert the mean into the symbol x with a line on top okay is p and the n is eight number right and the sum of the square of the data is 200 okay then the standard deviation is given for m so after writing down all the symbol we will write the formula for standard deviation which is summation of x square over n minus the mean square so then the standard deviation is we have to substitute 200 divided by 8 minus the mean square right so we will substitute 200 as a summation of the x square is given in the question and the n is 8 and the standard deviation is for m right and then the mean is given by p right okay so now we are going to substitute all the information into the formula so we have 4m is equal to square root of 200 divided by h minus p square don't forget the square uh oh uh, please add the square for the p so now you have 200 divided by 8 minus p square okay later i will add the square to the p if not i will have big trouble so 4m is equal to okay 200 divided by 8 you can press your calculator i think you need to squaring both sides 
because you need to cancel out the square root so you have 16 m square equal to uh, 200 divided by 8 minus the p square okay make sure you uh, put a square for the p before you proceed again later i will put the square 16 m square uh, 25 minus p okay i have to make sure uh, i express p in terms of the m so i bring the negative p to the left all right so i have to double check my p i must have the square that is very common mistake okay so please don't repeat the same thing like me so p is equal to square root of 25 minus 16 m square so many of you will uh, further simplify to become 5 minus 4 m which is totally unaccepted it cannot be uh, accepted because you have a minus there so you cannot square root the 25 you cannot square root the 16 m square all right do not square root the answer further this is because a uh, square root of the 25 minus uh, 16 m square cannot be simplified further as uh, 5 minus 4 m which is totally wrong okay it cannot be accepted because this is uh, not the right simplification okay so bear in mind that don't simplify okay like this if you simplify like this you will be penalized as wrong answer okay so just give your answer as p equal to square root 25 minus 16 m square all right i think i shall see you in my next video teaching to discuss further more about the statistic problem so bye bye and have a nice day